Hello and welcome to Commodore 128 Assembly Language Programming. I'm Aaron and today we're going to be working on the 80 column routine some more. Um, fixing the bugs that were in it when we ended last time. Um, they did. I did kind of realize what they were after I thought about it a while, um, but let's walk through it here and figure them out. Um, this is the this is what it was printing when we finished. I'll blow it up here and uh, so we can take a look at it. Um, what we expected the the expected behavior was that it would just draw a line diagonally across the screen, you know, from top to bottom, and instead we've got it repeating across the screen a ways instead of going you know, all the way to the bottom and we also have it getting squirrely instead of just being one single you know pixel line so there's two different problems actually that are, that's causing these two things um, the first thing you can get kind of a hint from the way it starts out um, it looks like it does the first eight eight dots probably or about eight dots perfectly um, starting from the upper left here you, know, you get about eight dots of, of a good line and then it looks like the next eight are reversed where you've got a line but it's reversed it's like it's drawing everything but the line and then after that it becomes just kind of random stuff okay. so the reason for that if we look at our routine here um, if you th if you think about what our what our x coordinate is, it's a number between zero and six hundred and thirty nine. We've got six hundred and forty possible dots across the screen, and so our x coordinate can be anything from zero to six hundred thirty nine. So when we come into this routine, write ADGXY, um, we store the high byte and the low byte of x, and then we come back for them down here, and we divide x by eight to get the num to get the number of the byte that we're going to work on because if you think about if we think about how um, how the, the dots are stored across the screen it's like this you've got the first byte has the first eight locations and then the next byte has the next eight locations and, and so on so if we repeat some of those So the very first eight dots on the screen in the upper left are represented by this first byte, byte zero, and then the next eight are this one and so on. They go across horizontally, unlike the 40 column screen where they go in, in blocks of eight by eight. Um, on the 80 column screen they just go directly across, across the screen. Um, so if you, let's say we want to set the 29th bit across, well the way we do that is um, first we divide we divide it 29 by 8 so 29 divided by 8 equals and you get 3 with a remainder of 5 All right so the 3 tells us that we're working on byte number three, which is right here. You've got byte zero, byte one, byte two, byte three. So you're working on this this byte right here. And that part works. We, we did that. But then the remainder of five tells you which bit you're going to light up, which bit you're going to turn on. And so that comes across here and sets you know, this bit right here. And to do that, that's where we come down, let's see, and we get the value from our table, which is at the end of the, which is at the end of um, the routine, and to do that, well, we had pushed x on the stack earlier. We get x back off the stack, and then we we use it as an index into our table, and the table down here then has the values that we're going to use to set the bit, or if we're clearing a bit, to clear the bit. Okay. So x then is an index into that table just to figure out which of the eight bits in the byte we're going to set. The only problem is I forgot to make sure x just had the remainder and not the whole, you know, not the whole value. So instead of x being 5 at this point when we're using it as an index, it's still 29. 
And so when it comes down and indexes into this table down here, the first time it's 0, the second time it's 1, the next time it's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, those all work correctly. But then the next time it's 8, and it actually indexes into off table, and then 9, 10, 11, and it indexes through off table, and then the next time it's indexing out into memory beyond our program, which could be anything. We don't know what's out there. Um, it's just, and that's where it gets into the random stuff. So that's why the first time here, you know, the first eight work because it's indexing into on table correctly. The next eight get reversed because instead of indexing in on table, it's actually indexing past that into off table. And so it's getting rever the reversed values of on table. And then after that, as it continues across the screen, it's just getting junk. So that happened because I never, I never limited it to just the remainder. So you divide x by 8 to get the, the byte number, but you also need to take modulo 8, or the remainder of dividing it by 8, to get the bit number within that byte. And I didn't do that. So the simplest way to do that is up here, where we push it on the stack, the simplest thing to do is to go ahead and AND that byte because we're not we're not going to need it again until down here where we pull it off the stack and use it as the use it as the um, index. So before we push it on the stack, we can mask it with the value seven, and that eliminates the high bits. And it's it's the same. It's a it's a fast way to do modulo eight. It's a fast way to say if we divided this value by eight, what would the remainder be? It's got to be a number between zero and seven. And so that's my little comment here that I put in to remind myself of how you do that. And I wrote the value in binary just to show, just to make it clear what we're doing. We're ending the value in, in A before we push it on the stack. We're ending it with this binary value, meaning that we're turning off the first five bits and just leaving the bottom three. So mask mask to get modulo 8. That's what we're doing there. So that's going to get our remainder. So let's see if that works. Flip over here to assemble it. Come back here to the monitor to load it and run it. Okay. So that cleared up our lines um, by fixing our X coordinate. Our, our X value that indexes into our thing. All right. So what's the other problem? Um, the other problem is with the Y coordinate. Um, I copied a lot of this code from the routine that we wrote to do the tech the text screen, and the text screen is only 25 lines high. So what we do, we, we have to multiply y by 80 because there's, you know, 80 bytes across. And so every time you go down a line, you're moving 80 bytes in memory. So we multiply the y coordinate by 80 to get the, to get, you know, the value of the, the actual um, address um, of the next line to start. And so on the text screen, um, y was never going to be more than 25. You multiply 25 by 80, you get um, you get 200. Well, that still fits in a byte, and so it was okay for y to be one byte as long as we were um, as long as we were still at this point. But on the graphic screen y can be anything up to 200. You start multiplying y by something, you know, it's going to be more than a byte really quick. And so um, we're going to have to have y be a 2-byte value as we do the, the multiplication by 80 here. And you do the multiplication by multiplying it by 4 and then adding it to itself one time 
you know, adding the original value to it to multiply it by five, and then you roll it um, four times to the left, or yeah, you roll it four times to the left to multiply it by 16, and that gives you y times 80. And so basically, we just have to make sure that as we roll, like here, we roll low 80 left twice. We shift it left twice to multiply it by 4. Well, we just have to make sure we also roll the high bite each time. And so, make sure I'm make sure I'm thinking right. All right. So we have we store y in low 80, and we already stored zero in high 80, which is fine. So after we shift low 80 once, we need to roll high 80. So if there's a carry bit, it can get it. And then the same thing here. All right. So now now we're multiplying a 16-bit value by 4 instead of just the 8 instead of just the low 8 bits by 4. Um, okay, now I'm wondering why I transferred y to a right here. Oh, okay, to, to add it. Yeah, that makes sense. Because y at this point Because y at this point had the original value of low 80. Yeah, that makes sense. And so add that to low 80. Store it back into low 80. But then we also need to increment high 80 if there was a carry. And so we'll branch of carry clear ahead. Increment high 80. And then there's our point to branch ahead to. I think that's right. Um, we'll be able to tell if it works, but um, basically we we have, at this point, high 80, low 80 is y times 4, and so we want to add the original y to that to get y times 5 in high 80, low 80. And that's what we're doing right here. Add it to add the original y to low 80, store it back, and then if there was a carry, increment high 80. No, that's not a good enough. Or, yeah, it is. Yeah, that's good enough. All right. Then we do a loop here four times to multiply by 16 where we shift and roll and that's okay that's already doing that's already doing both bytes so that should be okay I guess at that point 25 yeah sorry when I said before 25 times 80 was 200 that's wrong it's two it's 2,000 but 25 times 8 or 25 times 5 was 125 and so that fit into a bit we didn't have to deal with the high bite until this point so but we did deal with it, so that's okay. Um, all right, let's see if that fixed that. Oops, I got them. Got to assemble first. And there it is. So now it goes, you know, now the X coordinate works. Basically, we had a bug in the X coordinate and a bug in the Y coordinate. We just fixed them both. Um, and so it works. Um, one more thing we should do for testing purposes is clear bits. Now we know that setting bits works, or dots, or pixels, or whatever we want to call them. Let's clear some bits. Um, so if we go to our little test program here, setting the carry, our, 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 our right ADGXY program you set the carry flag when you want to write bits and you clear it when you want to clear bits. So let's clear the carry. So that we're going to clear the line instead of set it. And so before we do that, we want to fill the um, we want to fill the screen with color. I hope I haven't been writing behind this thing. 
this whole time. Hope you've been able to see what I'm doing. Let me shrink it up a bit here. I always forget to do that. Um, so what's our routine? We have a fill 80 RAM routine, so let's just fill it with um, Let's load A with 1010101. Or actually, let's load it let's, in binary. 1110111. All right. So that'll give us a mostly full screen with just bars running down, and then we'll draw our line up. We'll clear our line across them. So we should be able to tell whether our line works correctly as, a, as clearing the bits instead of setting the bits. Okay, so we've assembled, load it again, run it again. All right, hopefully you can see that it worked. Um, our fill filled in the bars, you know, vertical bars, and then the clear routine cleared the line down from the top corner down. So that is that, I think, on the 80 column routines for now. Um, where you go from there, you know, now, so now we can, we can plot points, basically. We can plot points, turn them on, turn them off. Um, we can fill the screen, we can clear the screen. I think from that point, what you want to do kind of depends on what you're going to do with it. You know, if you're going to draw, or if you're going to make a drawing program like, like paint or something like that, you're going to want to be able to draw, you know, with with the mouse or joystick or something. Um, you're going to want to have routines to do boxes and, and circles and stuff like that. But if you're doing a game, you're probably not going to want that. You're probably going to want other things like um, the ability to just copy little blocks of the screen to other places. Um, so it's really going to depend. And... I think I'll just wait until we get to something, you know, we'll just have to wait until we get to an actual program that's going to use this to decide, okay, what do we now need to use it to do? But we've got the basic, you know, we've got the basic utilities of being able to turn on the graphics and, and plot points, um, which is what we needed. So I think that's going to be it for this one. It's short, but um, that's because I didn't know what the bugs were when we finished last time and just needed to come back and fix them. So we'll be moving on from this for now until we need it for a program and then we'll come back to it. Um, but I'm going to move on to start planning on the farm program. So that'll be coming up soon. And I hope this was useful and interesting to uh, see this finished up. And thank you for watching.